Next up, let's talk about some graphs of functions and two variables. Now, when we talk about graphs of functions of two variables, we are talking about all of the ordered triples such that z is equal to some function of x and y. So this does count as a surface in three dimensions. So for functions of one variable, we had curves that existed within the xy plane. For functions of two variables, we're going to have surfaces that exist within Euclidean space. Now, it's very difficult to draw things in three dimensions, especially when you only have access to a two-dimensional surface like this one. So there are some two-dimensional renderings of three-dimensional things that we can talk about. So two-dimensional drawings of three-dimensional uh, figures. One of the ways that we do so is through the use of what we call level curves. When we think of something that is level, we think of something that is sort of um, horizontal within uh, three dimensions, as it were. So what we're really saying is a nice consistent z value as x and y change. So the way that we get a level curve is we set the value of our function equal to a constant and sketch the curve in two dimensions. So I'd like to try to demonstrate what that looks like. For example, let us consider uh, f of xy is equal to, let's do uh, 6 minus 2x minus 3y. Now, just in case you didn't recognize it immediately, uh, this would be similar to saying that z is equal to 6 minus 2x minus 3y or equivalently, this would be 2x plus 3y plus z is equal to 6. We recognize that from a previous section as being the equation of a plane in three dimensions. So what we're going to do is sketch several level curves. And the way that we'll do so is we'll set our function equal to a constant. So now we have a constant is equal to 6 minus 2x minus 3y, which means that to proceed, I want to try to see if we can get y by itself. This is the equation of a line in two dimensions, or rather a family of lines, depending on the corresponding value of k. So what we'll do is we'll add 3y to both sides <clears throat> and do just a little bit of reordering on the right-hand side. We'll also subtract k to get it over to the other side. And then let's go ahead and divide both sides by 3. We'll get negative 2 thirds x plus 6 minus k all over 3. So this would be considered a line or a family of lines with a slope equal to negative 2 thirds and a y-intercept at the point 0 comma 6 minus k over 3. Now, we're allowed to pick whatever values of k we're so interested in picking. I think that I'm going to pick multiples of um, 3 to make sure that this winds up being a, uh, a positive integer. So heading to the xy plane, we select several different values of k and go ahead and plug those in. So I'd like to start by plugging in simply k is equal to 0, and that would give us a y-intercept up at positive 2 with a slope of negative two-thirds. So y-intercept up here, and then a nice slope just like this. So we'll also label that this corresponds to k equals zero. Next, if I were to plug in k equals three, for example, we would have a y-intercept at one, slope once again of negative two-thirds, so that would look something like this. These lines really are supposed to be parallel. I am just terrible at, you know, drawing. Then if we were to plug in, say, k equals 6, k equals 6 would still be parallel to these lines, but this time the y-intercept would be right at the origin. Now, <clears throat> what I'm seeing is um, a plane, and as the z-value is increasing, we're sort of moving in this direction, so sort of back toward you as, uh, 
or up toward you as we move uh, to the left and down on these lines. Now, as a reminder from our uh, topic on lines and planes, if I wanted to actually draw this thing in three dimensions, I think that I could let you know what these lines would correspond to in three dimensions. So first off, heading back to this equation, we can get some intercepts for the plane. Three, four, five, six. Z intercept would be six. We get that by setting x and y equal to zero. If we set y and z equal to zero, we'll get an x intercept of three. That'll be this guy right here. And uh, if we set x and z equal to zero, we'll get y equals two, which would be a y intercept of two. So the outline of the plane in just the first octant would look like this. Now, how that corresponds to these level curves here, if k is equal to zero, what we're really saying is that our z value is equal to zero. So k equals zero would correspond to what we see within the xy plane. That would be this line right here. So this part right here corresponds to k equals zero. Then as we go up a little bit, you'll notice that the y value diminishes to one and the x-intercept would be one and a half. That would be right about here. So that k equals three actually corresponds to a z-value of three. And going parallel to each of those axes, this little portion right here would correspond to k is equal to three. Then k equals 6 actually passes through uh, the origin, as it were, and looking from above, that would be this right here. And the corresponding level curve, as it were, would be this. So that corresponds to k equals 6. So that's the, uh, the observation that we make here, is that this is what it would look like in three dimensions. When seen from above, it would look just like this. So hopefully that gives at least a little bit of understanding as far as what's going on here. Now there is another way to talk about a three-dimensional rendering of these two-dimensional things, and that is if cross-sections are round. So what I'd like to do is consider another function of two variables, f of x, y is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. Now <clears throat> with that in mind, if I were to substitute a z in here, what we're really looking at is z is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared, or really what we're dealing with is the top half of the cone, z squared is equal to x squared plus y squared, so top half only. Now if we were to set our function value equal to a constant, it would wind up in this form once again. So level curves would take the form k is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared, or equivalently, this would be x squared plus y squared is equal to k squared. So these level curves would be a circle with a radius equal to k, and the center right at the origin. So in the xy plane, if we wanted to do, say, k equals 0, 1, 2, and 3, k equals 0 would correspond to just a point at the origin. It'll be kind of complicated to label, though, since it is so tiny there. Then, oh boy, this is not a consistent circle, but we're going to go with it. k equals 1 would correspond to a circle of radius 1. k equals 2 would correspond to a circle of radius 2. And that would look kind of like... Oh boy, wish me luck. Well, you're, you're watching this probably weeks after I've recorded it, so um, thank you retroactively for all of the luck that you wished upon me. And then k equals 3 would correspond to a circle of radius 3, also centered at the origin. Oh boy. Oh, it's starting to look a little distended, but oh boy, here we go. You know what? I've done worse. And all the way in the middle here, that would be k equals zero. So what I'm going to do is do my best to try to draw what the three-dimensional rendering of this thing would look like, and then let you know what uh, what those all would correspond to. So we would get some. Nope, nope. This is this is not great. 
So these circles that we would see would correspond to circles of increasing radius that are centered right about the z-axis. So this could correspond to say k equals 3 right up here. k equals 2 could be slightly down a little bit farther. k equals 1 could be in just a little bit farther than that. k equals 1, k equals 2, and k equals 3. And of course k equals 0 would simply be the vertex of the comb way down here. So when seen from above, if you're looking right down the z-axis, these circles would correspond to the circles that you see right here. Larger k values are actually indicative of larger z values when viewed from above. Now the alternative approach would be to do a quick conversion into cylindrical coordinates. So convert to cylindrical coordinates. where we would have f of xy equals the square root of x squared plus y squared would actually wind up being f of r and theta is equal to. If you'll recall, the uh, conversion to cylindrical coordinates is the same as the conversion into polar coordinates, and x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. Square root of r squared, provided that r is only positive, would be r. Now if we were to consider what that looks like in the RZ trace, RZ trace, then what we're looking at is the function z is equal to r. That would be a straight line, slope 1, passing through the origin. Now the way that this corresponds to what we've already done is, imagine I take this figure right here and I rotate it about the z-axis. What shape would that sweep out? Well, if we mark down here where r equals 1 is, where r equals 2 is, and where r equals 3 is, those three dots would be sweeping out three circles, and the circles that they would be sweeping out would be this one up here, this one right here, and this one down here. Now, this typically only works if you wind up with something with circular cross-sections, like a cone or a sphere or things along those lines. So, just uh, three different ways to visualize what's going on in three dimensions. We've got our level curves, we've got our actual three-dimensional rendering, and our um, RZ cross-section, as it were. So, to reiterate, the RZ function that we get here, that gets rotated about the Z-axis. That would correspond to, if I were to just slice through this cone from top to bottom, what would a cross-section look like? And it would be, in this case, just a straight line.